Good day, everyone. Today, we're now on the first topic of trigonometry, which is about the angles and measurements. Trigonometry is a branch of mathematics which treats of the solutions of triangles or triangle measurement. It includes mathematical investigations through the six trigonometric functions, which are the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, second, and cotangent. Trigonometry was derived from three Greek words, Tri meaning three, gonia meaning angle, and metron meaning measurement. Let's now define some terms in trigonometry. Firstly, the angle and its sides. An angle is the union of two rays meeting at a common point called vertex. So these are the two rays that's united, and a ray is a part of a line that has a fixed starting point, but no end point. So this is the angle and then these two rays meet at a common point called the vertex. Two rays are the sides of the angles, one which is the terminal side and the other is the initial side. The initial side is the ray in its initial position or the stationary or the fixed side, while the terminal side is the ray in its location after the rotation or the moving side. So you just have to remember initial side is always going to be in horizontal position. And then as we measure the angle from the initial side, it will go to the terminal side, which is going to be the ending ray. Next, we have the standard position of an angle. An angle is said to be in standard position if its vertex is at the origin and its initial side is along the positive x-axis. So, so this is the illustration of an angle in standard position. The initial side is along the positive x-axis and the vertex is at the origin. Next are the kinds of angles. We have exactly seven kinds of angles. The first one is the zero angle, which measures exactly zero degrees, which is illustrated like this one. Next, we have the acute angle, which measures between zero to 90 degrees. Next, we have the right angle, which measures exactly 90 degrees. Next, we have obtuse angle, which measures between 90 to 180 degrees. Next, we have the straight angle, which measures exactly 180 degrees. Next, we have reflex angle, which measures between 180 to 360 degrees. And lastly, we have the angle of complete revolution, which measures exactly 360 degrees. We also have the pairs of angles. First is the complementary angles, which is a pair of positive angles whose sum of the measure is 90 degrees. And the supplementary angles, which are two positive angles whose sum of the measures is 180 degrees. Example, given an angle which measures 53 degrees, to find out what is its complementary angle, we'll just subtract the given from 90 degrees, which will give us 37 degrees and 37 degrees plus 53 degrees that will give us a sum of 90 degrees. So they are complementary angles. And to find out for its supplementary angle, we'll subtract the given from 180 degrees. So that will give us 127 and 127 plus 53. That will give us a sum of 180 degrees. So they are supplementary angles. Let's now move on with special angles. Special angles are the angles which are multiples of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. So these are 30, 120, 210, 330. For 45, we have 45, 135, 225, 315. And for the multiples of 60, we have 60, 120, 240, and 300. Degrees. So these are the special angles. 
Next is the quadrantal angles. Quadrantal angles are the angles in standard position having their terminal sides along the x-axis or y-axis. These are the angles with measure 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees, and all of the multiples of 90. Next is the reference angles. These are the smallest positive acute angle formed by the terminal side. So for example, we have here this angle and it measures 50 degrees. So if you're asked what is the reference angle, the answer is 50 degrees because it is the smallest positive acute angle formed by the terminal side. Another example, so we have this angle which measures 100 and 10 degrees. And to find its reference angles, it's going to be this distance away from the x axis. And as we all know, from the initial side to this terminal side, this is a straight angle which measures 180 degrees. And it is very important for you to understand that the reference angle is always positive and is always acute, which means that it has to be less than 90 degrees. To find the measure of this angle, we'll just subtract 110 from 180 degrees, which will give us 70 degrees. So the measure of this angle is equal to 70 degrees. Next, we have this angle, which measures 245 degrees. And always remember that the reference angle is the distance away from the x-axis and is always positive acute angle. So to get the reference angle of 245 degrees, we'll subtract 180 degrees from 245 degrees, which will give us the reference angle equal to 65 degrees. And for the last example, Say we have this angle which measures 300 degrees. And again, we'll measure this distance away from the x-axis. One revolution is equal to 360 degrees. So that will be 360 degrees minus 300 degrees. So that will give us the reference angle equal to 60 degrees. Let's now proceed with coterminal angles. These are two angles having the same initial side and the same terminal side, but different amounts of rotation. Example, we have the angle 30 degrees. How can we find the coterminal angles? Here's the quick way of getting the answer. We just need to add 360 degrees and we'll take away 360 degrees from 30 degrees. So the positive coterminal angle is going to be 30 degrees plus 360 degrees. So that will give us 390 degrees. And the negative coterminal angle is 30 degrees minus 360. So that will give us negative 330 degrees. Now let's talk about what this means. A 30 degree angle is in quadrant one. So in here we have 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Between 0, 90, it's quadrant one between 90 and 180 degrees, there's quadrant two. Between 180 and 270, there's quadrant three. And between 270 and 360, there's quadrant four. Here's the 30 degree angle. When we add 360 to it, 360 will bring you all the way to 390 degrees. And 390 and 30 degrees, they are at the exact location. They have the same point and that's why they are coterminal angle because they land on the exact same point on the graph. The only difference is 390 degrees covers the entire circle at least once. Now, negative 330 degrees travel in the other way, but you land at the same spot, 30 degrees. So, quaternal angles are angles that exist at the same spot, but has different amounts of rotation and 
value. Let's proceed with the two properties of angles. First property is an angle measured in a counterclockwise direction is positive, while if the direction is clockwise, the measure of the angle is negative. Second property, one revolution or one complete round is equal to 360 degrees. Example, we have to convert 450 degrees to its equivalent revolution. So what we're going to do is to multiply the given by one revolution over 360 degrees for us to get the equivalent of 450 to a revolution. So that will give us five fourth revolution or 1.25 revolution. Another example, we have to convert 2.5 revolution to its equivalent degree. So that will be multiplied to 360 degrees over one revolution. So that will give us 900 degrees. There are two ways of measuring angles. First is by degree measure. The measure of the central angle subtended by an arc of a circle equal to 1 over 360 of the circumference of the circle. Take note that degree is divided into 60 equal parts called minutes. Thus, 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes and a minute is divided into 60 equal parts called seconds. Hence, 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds. Second is by region measure. The measure of the central angle subtended by an arc of a circle equal to the radius of the circle. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi, which is the radius, and subtends an angle of 360 degrees from which the following was obtained. Region in degrees is equivalent to 57 degrees, 17 minutes, and 45 seconds. You can see this functions on your calculator for degrees and for pi. And degree is equal to 0 0.01745 region. In converting degrees to regions, we have to multiply the number of degrees by pi over 180 degrees or by 0 0.01745 region over 1 degree. So for example, we have to convert 135 degrees to region. So we'll multiply it by pi over 180 degrees, which will give us 3 pi over 4. Or we can convert it by multiplying it to 0 0.01745 region over 1 degree, which will give us 2.356 region. So these two are just equal. Next example, we have a given 25 minutes. So in, to convert it to region, you have to convert minutes first into degrees. And as we all know, one degree is equal to 60 minutes. That will give us 5 over 12 degrees. Now that we have 25 minutes in degrees, so we cannot convert this into regions by multiplying it to pi over 180. So that will give us pi over 400. 32. This is the conversion of 25 minutes in regions, or we can multiply 5 over 12 degrees by this one, which will give us 0 0.007 region. So again, these two are just equal. Next, in converting regions to degrees, we have to multiply the number of regions by 180 degrees over pi or 57.2958 degrees over one region. Example, we have 11 pi over 3, so we'll multiply it by 180 degrees over pi, which will give us 660 degrees, or we can multiply it by this one, which will also give us 660 degrees. Try those examples on your own by expressing these two regions in degrees, minutes, and seconds, and we have to express the, this given two regions. Thank you guys for listening and we hope that you learn.